Anybody? Hallelujah. Yes, Anybody in here God. glad that Hallelujah. God woke them up this morning? Hallelujah. Started you on your way? Hallelujah. Gave you a portion of health and strength? That's not the good stuff no more? Well, when I grew up, I was raised on that stuff. But when I grew up, they called it the little things. But as I matured, I realized if you don't wake up in the morning, you don't get to do nothing else. So that ain't a little thing. If you don't have a portion of health and strength, you can't do nothing else. So that ain't a little thing. If you don't have your right mind, you can't do nothing else. So that ain't a little thing. So God, we thank you for the big things waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, giving us the activities of our limbs. And since we have the activities of our limbs, I just challenge everybody to stand up, join in with praise and worship with us as we set the atmosphere in this house. Anybody in here ready to praise the Lord like me? I dare you to praise the Lord according to how good he has been to you this week. Because I guarantee you it could have been worse. I guarantee you it should have been worse. But when you look back over your life over this week, I guarantee you that God has been good to us in this place. Hallelujah! Yeah. 
this morning. Let's worship him for who he is. Hallelujah. He's been our healer, our provider. Anybody ready to, to lay some things at the altar in this morning? You might have a heavy heart, maybe a sleepless night, might be feeling all alone. I dare you to give it to God right now this morning. Broken spirits, Lord, hallelujah, give it to him. People ain't treating you right, give it to God, hallelujah. God, I'm just tired. I'm going to give that to you. I'm tired, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just continue in worship right now. Hallelujah. Let's open up your mouth. The fruit of your lips. Give him the glory that he deserves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All of your problems. All of your problems. All of your pain, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. All of your heart, all of your heart, all guilt and shame, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. Cast your cares upon him, he'll hear your call. Lay it down, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. He will promise he will never leave your forsaken friend in need. Lay it down, lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. Oh, 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 oh. lay it down, lay it down, lay it down. Oh, 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 oh. lay it down. Lay it down All of your heart All of your problems All of your pain Lay it down Lay it down 
Give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. It is a good morning. We all are here this morning. We're here for the altar call. Those of you who need prayer, pray for yourself also. Those of you who are lonely at heart and like to come this way and join with me, God will accept you just how you are. So today, I'm going to go down in prayer. You can join me if you like. Oh, gracious Father, the father of Isaac, Jacob, and John, the Savior, so is our Savior. We come here this morning with a humble heart and a lowly mind that you will be with us throughout the end. We thank you this morning. We can never say thank you enough. We thank you for waking up this morning. We thank you for bringing this thus far. 
We thank you for the food you put on our table. We thank you for the car that you gave us. It might not be what we want, but it'll move us back and forth. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the children that you gave us. We thank you that we cannot control them, but we can instill them the word of God. And oh no, Lord, we thank you that today you gave us breath to breathe, the trees that are out there that are giving out oxygen. Oh Lord, just the little things that you have given us. We thank you for it. We thank you for the house, oh Lord, where we live. It, we could have been outside, but no, oh Lord, you saw fit that you put us out of the rain. And we thank you for it. We thank you that you throw in your arms around and protect us for all harm and all things that can be harmful to the body. So good morning, Father. When we meet at the crossroad, give us the direction which way to go. And Father, place in us a kind word that we may say to others, a kind word that breaks someone's heart. Even to just say, good morning. It will make them a better life. There's so many people who's down in heart and spirit this morning, Lord, but you can lift them up. There's so many people who are sick. There's so many people who have so many diseases in them, heart problems, bacteria all throughout their body. We survived it, Lord. Cure them, giving a healing hand. Throw your arms around them, oh Lord, that somebody lost somebody in the in the COVID-19, they're still mourning. They're still grieving. Lift up their heart this morning. Let them know there is a day tomorrow that trouble don't last always. Lord, here we are. Here we are just lonely as we can be. Here we are standing in the need of a prayer. We know, Lord, when blessed prayer go up, blessings come down. You are who we need. You are who we want. Places where you want us to be, Lord. As we travel on the highways and byways, throw your arm protects around us. Many of us are lonely here without mothers or fathers, but those who have them, let them praise them. Let them give them love. Let them tell them, I love you. Go and tell your children, I love you. Say it over and over. Because it's a hard thing for them to come up in a world of the day. You gave us a perfect world, but we somehow managed to destroy it. Oh Lord, look for us as we are, trying to do what you want us to do. We have not done always what you want us to do, but each and every day, Lord, we pray that we get better and better and more like you. Lord, that is my word for prayer. Take me where I need to be. Take us where we need to be. Put words in our mouth that is pleasing to your ear. As we go home, give us a place in your kingdom. Wherever you are, Lord, there we wish to be also. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Back was against the wall. And it looked as if it was over You made a way yeah. And we're standing here Only because you made a way When my back was against the wall and it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made You made a way You made a way When our backs were and it looked as if it was over You made a way That's it, come on and tell him And we're standing here Only because you made a way 
listen, we're the only ones standing here. Y'all sitting like he hadn't made a way for you. Is anybody in the room honest enough to admit if it hadn't been for the Lord? I know where I would be. You might not know where you would be, but I know where I would be. Would you help us sing that? When my back was against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And we're standing here And we're standing here Only because you made Gospel of Matthew chapter 11 Matthew chapter 11 made a way you made a way Matthew chapter 11 you made a way we just sing until y'all find Matthew you Made a way. You made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. Made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. Made a way. Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, Matthew chapter 11, verse number two says, now when John, the first cousin of Jesus, heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to his first cousin, are you the one who is to come? or shall we look for another? And his first cousin answered him, go and tell my cousin what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them and blessed is the one who is not offended by me father we stand in your house and we call on your name for we realize that you are god and beside you god there is no other speak to the hearts and the minds of your people today in a true and a tangible way that when we have come to the end of this time together you get all of the glory out of our lives we don't know why but you did it we don't know how but we're grateful and we thank you for the answer to this prayer in the name of jesus we pray amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord herod antipas is the politically brilliant but morally corrupt roman appointed ruler of palestine and during a visit to his half-brother, somebody say half-brother. Come on, y'all stop playing. Somebody say half-brother. Some of y'all got some half-siblings in the room. I got one. He goes to see his half-brother. And when he goes to see his half-brother named Herod Philip, he decides that Philip's wife could do better with him. 
So he puts out his own wife, took his half-brother's wife, and started a new family with his sister-in-law. The Bible is better than the young and the restless, y'all. I don't, I don't know why y'all still watching Victor Newman and whatnot, but the Bible is better than the young and they're better than the bold and the beautiful Eric and Ridge and they, they keep passing Brooke back and forth between father and some of y'all know what I'm talking about you watched it a few times in your life here we go he put out his own wife took his brother's wife and started a new family with his sister-in-law the Jews were disgusted so are you so am I and so the first cousin of Jesus named John publicly condemns Herod for the sin of taking his sister-in-law to be his wife while putting out the one he was married to. Are y'all still following me? Hard to lose you that quick. Here we go. So Herod, watch it, throws John in jail. I don't know anybody. I, I can't really blame him for that. I don't know anybody that likes their sin shouted from the rooftop. Anybody in the room, you want somebody to follow you? Y'all know she's a liar, right? And anybody, y'all like liars? Y'all know she's a liar? Anybody, hey y'all, she's a liar. Anybody, you want somebody everywhere you go telling people you're a liar? No? No, oh, y'all don't use words like liar. Y'all call for holes and stuff in church now. You, you, you want them to walk with you down the street? Y'all know this man she married to is her brother-in-law. No, he, he really didn't like that, so he throws John in jail. Watch this. I'm moving very quickly to get somewhere. Uh, so Herod has a birthday party. The same one who took his sister-in-law and made her his wife. He had a birthday party. And at the birthday party, his niece slash stepdaughter. Some of y'all been to a few vacation Bible schools. You know where the story is going. Don't, 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 don't spoil it for everybody else. Just, just let them. It's okay. They ain't never heard the story. They, they still in awe. Just let them, you know, roll along with the story. Uh, so his niece slash sister-in-law. Some of y'all got some family trees like that. You got some slashes in there that other people don't have. But on his family tree, he had a niece slash sister-in-law, a daughter-in-law rather. So his niece slash daughter-in-law comes and dances for him at his birthday party. She, she dances for him at his... At his birthday. Y'all looking at me like Alice in Wonderland. Have y'all read the Bible? She, okay, y'all looking at me like Alice in Wonderland and you don't believe that's the kind of dance she was doing. Watch this. Uh, when she finished, and I mean this must have been some lap dance, y'all. When, when she finished, Herod promises to give her anything she wants. I believe he had the gun. He just sat there and held it in it. Okay, here we go. Up to half of his kingdom. When a man offers to give a woman half of everything he has. That must have been some dance, wasn't it, mother? I, his wife, her mother, is in the room. And her mama was so bad that he took her from his half-brother. You can imagine what the daughter was working with. And he offers to give her half of his kingdom. So he, whew, he said, baby, what do you want? 
Just, just tell. I, I wish some sister in the room honest enough to admit you heard that before. Baby, what do you want? Just tell me what you want. Just, just what is it? Just what is it going to take? Just, just tell me what it's going to take. That's what Herod says. Watch, watch it. So she goes and talks to her mama. And her mama knows that there's this fool running around town calling out the fact that she left her first husband to go be with him. And she said, baby, what I want you to do, watch this, I want you to tell him you want John the Baptist's head on a platter. Few of y'all, you know the story. And listen, I promise you, this is the most exciting it's going to get from here on. I'm going to hurt you in a minute. Here we go. So in the text, John has been in prison for months waiting for his head to come off. Over one lap dance at a birthday party. Because he said, y'all are wrong. Okay, all right, here we go. And so now, watch this, he's reached a low point with God. So John's question and Jesus' response show us how to handle spiritual disappointment. John asked this question during a season of weak faith. His mind is confused. His heart is disappointed. And John turns his back on Jesus. Because he felt like Jesus had turned his back on John. Is anybody in the room, you ever been there? You honest enough to admit you had some low seasons in your relationship with God and you felt like God turned his back? Don't fool me now. Anybody in the room honest enough to admit, okay, I got a few witnesses and I'm just trying to figure out who I'm preaching to. Okay, here we go. Watch this. Uh, he is a faithful believer who is disappointed with God. When John is in the Jordan baptizing, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But when John lands in prison, aren't thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? Are, are you sure you're... Disappointment has a way of causing you to question everything you believe about God. Perhaps you're sitting right next to John this morning. Whether you be in the room or at home. And you know the Lord, you just don't understand him. You asked for a mate. And you're trying to wait on God, but you still go into bed every night alone. You ask for a child, and it seemed like the ones who are doing it the other way keep coming up with babies. But you cannot conceive. You ask for healing and you're still hurting. For a job, but you're still passing out resumes. For relief, but still struggling. I, I may not have named your issue, but whatever is causing you to question God is your potential place of disappointment. You know the Lord, you just don't understand him. In his book, A Grief Observed, C.S. Lewis wrote these words, the thing that I fear is not that I'll stop believing in God, but that I might begin believing dreadful things about him. Not that I'll say there is no God, but that I'll say, so that's what God is really like? This is what it means to be disappointed with God. It is real and it can happen to you. 
John became disappointed for the same reason that anybody becomes disappointed. Here it is. If you don't get nothing else, get these two words today. Unfulfilled expectations. That, that is the minimum requirement for disappointment. You have to expect something. Don't try to psychoanalyze John because disappointment is a reality that all of us got to address in our lives. And whenever it happens, it happens because God or somebody else doesn't meet or live up to our expectation. Uh huh. I, I, I know. I know. I got a few witnesses in the room. You loan somebody some money, and they told you you would have your money back by the end of the month. But the end of the month came and they did not live up to your expectation. Okay, here we go. Watch this. Uh, they were excited and enthusiastic when you were handing them your money. But that same level of enthusiasm dissipated when you had to pick up the phone. Uh, hey, um, listen, we ain't that close. You, you should have started with $20 if you were going to play this game. Because over this $200, I got something for you. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, uh, let me try it another way. Let me go another way. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly to join together this man and woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate, one instituted of God, and should not be entered into unadvisedly but sober-mindedly and in the fear of God. God. I, a few folks have heard, heard those words before. Listen, I'm not new to this. I'm true to this. Been doing it for a few days. Here we go. And so you came to a place that looked like this and heard words that sounded like that. And then you went home with somebody that did not live up to your expect. Oh, okay. All right. Here we go. Watch, watch, watch this. Here we go. Watch it. Okay. I'm done. Here we go. Uh, John and Jesus were cousins. They, they, they were first. First cousins. Not, 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 not second cousins eight times removed. Not that grandparents grew up together in Mississippi and when they migrated west to California, they were good friends and y'all were raised as cousins. No, first Cut. The same blood that ran through Jesus' veins ran through John's veins. Are, are y'all following me here? And, and, and for some odd reason, you expected your family to be there for you when you needed them. But they didn't visit. They didn't call. And it seems like they don't even care. And that, watch it, is disappointing. John, John, John was also the forerunner who paved the way for Jesus. Perhaps John was preaching so hard against this sin of Herod and this lap dance and him marrying his sister-in-law because he knew that his ministry was intended to begin what Jesus was getting ready to complete. So when Herod throws him in jail, John had what in his mind was a realistic expectation. My cousin is going to come see about me. Don't, don't you think that's realistic? I'm, I'm supporting his ministry. I, I, I'm serving his agenda. But, but my cousin hadn't come to see about me. Months have gone by. Everybody else is getting called to the visitor's area except John. Mail call. Everybody else got letters back home except John. And what random visitor astray does fall into the prison to come visit John in the person he wants to hear from anyway. Here he is waiting for Jesus to come to his rescue, but Jesus never shows up. 
John goes to great lengths to prepare for the ministry of Jesus. The Bible even tells us that John's disciples baptized more people than the disciples of Jesus. I have, watch this, a more successful ministry than Jesus. And he still won't come see me in prison. When I got locked up, Jesus didn't lift a finger to help me. To put it simply, Jesus did not live up to John's expectations. But I came to remind you this morning that spiritual devotion does not obligate God to fulfill your personal expectations. To put it simply, God does not owe you anything. Luke 17 and 10, Jesus says, watch this, it's in, it's in red in your Bible. So you also, when you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what is our duty. You are not a shareholder in the kingdom of God. You don't get voting rights in heaven to determine God's divine agenda on earth. But there are times when we feel like God could at least do this for me because I did that for him. In his book, Disappointment with God, Philip Yancey writes, true atheists do not, I presume, feel disappointment with God. They expect nothing and receive nothing. But those who commit their lives to God, no matter what, instinctively expect something in return. I'm honest enough to admit that I know better, but I still fall into that trap sometimes. And I have to remind myself that God will not allow me to dictate, define, or determine how, when, where, or at what speed he chooses to intervene. Because God doesn't owe me anything. Listen to the question again and I'm done. Well, not really, but I'm close. Are you the one who is to come? Or shall we look for another? The two Greek words translated in the New Testament, another, the first means another of the same kind. The second means another of a different kind. When John asked uh, whether they should look for another, he's not asking if they should look for some other person like Jesus. He's asking, should we be looking for a different type altogether? Be because God doesn't live up to his expectation He's willing to throw the entire person of Jesus away. John, John is saying, you're, you're not living up to my expectation of who you're supposed to be. So I need a different Jesus. That's, that's what he said. He said, I, listen, I, I just need a different one. I, I, I'm not satisfied with this one. So he tried to take it back to the store. Said, no, 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 you don't understand. I, th this one's not doing what, what I bought it to do. I need a different one. I, I, no, 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 no. I'm sure for somebody else, this Jesus will work just fine. He was good enough for my mama. He, he, my, my, my grandmother liked him. They got along just fine. Big mama and them, they love this model. But I need a different model. The reports that John received about Jesus in prison consisted of him preaching. And miracles, watch this, here's the real underlying problem, that, that reflected mercy. John is sitting in prison looking for Jesus to start releasing judgment. But instead of releasing judgment, Jesus is out releasing mercy. 
Let me say you understand what I just said. Jesus, I'm sick of him. And I need you to come do something with him. And the something God chose to do with him was bless him. And, and because Jesus is doing good to people that you want him to do bad to, I need a different Jesus. I, 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 just, I need a different model. This one ain't working for me because this one is blessing my enemies. This one is making ways for people I don't like. This one is doing good stuff to people I want only bad stuff to happen to. So I need a different Jesus. That, 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 that's, that's what John, that's what John, that's what John was saying. He, he wants a head busting Jesus. That's, that's what he wants. He, he wants a head busting Jesus, but he got a compassion consumed Jesus. Imagine warning God to avenge some offense that was committed against you and instead God gives the person mercy. L listen, listen, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Because some of y'all can't relate to that. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. The man that used to beat your mama, God gave mercy. The person that molested and raped you, God gave mercy. That, 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 that's when people check out. It, it got awfully quiet in the room. The only person talking to me is the organ right now. It, it got quiet in the room because when we have an expectation of what ought to happen to the people who wrong us and God doesn't live up to our expectation, we need a different Jesus. The person that stole all my money and left me with nothing, you mean to tell me you're going to give them mercy? I need a different Jesus. For the record, John's expectation was not wrong. It was just incomplete. John rightly understood that the Messiah would bring judgment. What he didn't understand was that the Messiah also came to bring mercy. And you have to be careful to avoid changing your view of God just because you don't understand his plan. Because when God does things, he does them from a perspective of eternity. While we're concerned with our present circumstances. When, when God does things, he does them because he's cared about your life everlasting, not your life down here. All downhill from here, the fact that John had doubts and the reasons behind them were not as important as what he did with them. John uses his disciples to smuggle his doubts out of prison and take them to Jesus. John had questions, but he took his questions to Jesus. He, he trusted Jesus with his doubts. And Jesus didn't get angry or take John's questions personally. Watch what he does. He just extends more mercy. The same mercy John had a problem with. Jesus can handle your questions. He can handle your doubts and he can handle your disappointments, but you got to give them to him. Now, here's the tension of the text. You ready? Here's the tension of the text. He left John in prison. Jesus cares about our disappointments. But it does not mean he will reshape his divine and everlasting agenda for your life just to meet your expectations. He, he will not adjust God's plan to avoid his own suffering. If, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will. But as you will, Jesus refuses to compromise his mission to limit his own agony and he wouldn't do it for himself and he might not do it for you. Uh, listen, li listen, li listen, listen, I, I need you, I really need you to hear me today. It, it ain't rainbows and unicorns today. I came to deliver to you a harsh reality and that reality is he didn't do it for himself and he might not do it for you. 
He didn't even answer John's question. Are you the one that should come or do we look for another? He could have just said, yes, I am. But he provides an indirect answer and forced John to sort things out on his own. The response of Jesus warns us to trust him and not answers. James 1 and 5, God promises to give wisdom, not answers. He guides, but he does not give us a road map to understand every decision he makes. And because we seek answers instead of God, we set ourselves up for unnecessary disappointment. But I challenge you today, and I'm finished, I challenge you today, to trust God without answers. Without answers. Without the details. God, I trust you. I, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I trust you. I don't have answers, but I trust you. Even when I don't like the direction this seems to be heading, I trust you. When I don't agree with how I see you moving, I trust you. Because I've constructed something in my mind that I want to see happen and I want this to sort out in this particular way. But even if it doesn't sort out the way I scripted it, God, I trust you. Would you take a minute right where you are? Without a lot of fanfare, but before a special song starts, j just take a minute right where you are and tell God in your personal way, I trust you. I, I'm not going to try to manifest my way through this one. I trust you. I, I, I'm not trusting anything else. I'm not calling in no favors. I'm looking at heaven for this one. Because I recognize that that same baby that Mary held in her arms is the same baby that held all of the entire universe together. And if a baby can hold the entire universe together, surely he's God enough to be concerned about my issue. Surely he's God enough. To ensure that even if I don't like the way it turns out, it'll turn out for my good. As uncomfortable as I am right now, I trust you. I'm used to being in control. I'm used to having answers. I'm used to being able to sort it out on my own, pay my way out, make a call or two and get it done. But today I give up and God, I trust you. I need you to hear me today for the very last time and I promise I'm walking away. And whatever happens in this moment, somebody else going to have to be responsible for because I might have to go get right down there next to her and join her. Listen, I'm going to say it one more time. And if the spirit of God taps on your shoulder and I'm talking to you, I need you to respond. I don't care how you respond. I'm not going to orchestrate this moment. But God without answers, I trust you. I don't know how it's going to work out. But I'm going to go to sleep tonight. Because that's not my business how it's going to work out. That's your business. So right now in this moment, I turn it over to you. 
God, I take my hands off of it. I walk away from it and I let you have it because I recognize that I've made a mess of things on my own trying to handle it with these hands by myself. So now, God, because I have no other option, I trust you. Father, in the name of Jesus, if you would only Trust me, trust me, uh huh. Trust me, I will be with you, I will be with you, I will be with you. If you would only trust me, trust me, trust me. Y'all trying to act like you don't know the song? Oh, you forgot it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'll fight your We don't have answers. If we be honest, we don't even have words in this moment. But we trust you. We're out of options. So we trust you. And we're tired of trying to do it on our own. So we trust you. We thank you that even when it feels like you've abandoned us, that you have not left us. So in these moments, when the words fail us and all we have left is God, I trust you. We release it in these moments and we declare that we trust you without details. We trust you with broken hearts today. We trust you. Would you just take a moment and open your mouth and tell him you trust him? Come on, you can do better than that. Open your mouth and tell him you trust him. For those of you watching online, take a moment and type it in the screen right where you are. God, I trust you. Without answers, I trust you. Without details, I trust you. And this thing I've been banging my head against the wall over. I'm ready to turn it over to you today. I know they know the song. the song too.
Trust me if you will only trust me, trust me, trust me. All right, listen. The gospel has been clearly preached in your hearing today. The Bible says the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by that which is made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And there is a day coming when there is only one question that will be asked. When you met Jesus, did you accept him or did you reject him? You are now responsible for what you have heard and Jesus says, in the day that you shall hear my voice, harden not your hearts. John Wesley declared that he felt his heart strangely warm. Martin Luther said that in these moments, his eyes were flooded with light. But whatever this moment represents for you, if you're listening to the sound of my voice and you have not accepted Jesus as your personal savior, I want you to know that there is no better place and there is no better time than right here and right now. I want you to know today that God loves you and he offers a wonderful plan for your life. And if you're here today, whether in this room or watching online, and you have not yet accepted Jesus as your personal savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to open up your heart and to let Jesus come in. If you're here right now, whether in the room or online, and you would be honest enough to admit that you sense the Spirit of God tapping you on the shoulder, and this is your moment, and this is your day, would you come from wherever you are? Just come. This is your moment. This is your day. Just come. If you're watching online, just say you're talking to me and I promise you there are people that are watching right now that will grab a hold of you right where you are and get you the rest of the way to Jesus. Do not let this opportunity pass you by as the Spirit of God is moving throughout this room from heart to heart and breast to breast. If you're here in these moments and you would be honest enough to admit you have not accepted Jesus, as your personal savior, just come. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise on today. God did his job on today. The prayers that we simply receive what has been given to us so that we can live this life according to God's holy will and purpose and not our will but his will be done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. On this morning, uh, we say God bless you and thank you. Thank you to those in the house on this morning. Thank you to those online on this morning that you continue to serve God with your whole heart, that we continue to give ourselves over to the man whose hands we're in that we continue to see things beyond ourselves and see them how God sees them so that we can walk around with a smile on our face even though everything's not going the way we want it to so that we can have joy in our heart even though we might not be in a joyous situation so that we can give God the glory even when we don't understand the rest of the story On this morning, as we stand to be dismissed, our ushers are in the rear. 
as we give as cheerful givers because that is what the word of God commands us to do. God loves a cheerful giver. And I don't know about you, but the last time I checked, love brings some benefits. And if I can put God in a position where he loves me a little bit more than he loved me before, I'm in a good place. Hallelujah. Thank you and God bless you to everyone who gave, who supported, who volunteered for our Thanksgiving feeding. Let's give Christ verse a round of applause. We provided over 200 meals, gave away clothing, and helped somebody's Thanksgiving be a little bit better than it might have been. Hallelujah. We thank God for you because it was you that made it possible. It was those who gave, those who helped, those who served, those who came by, those who stopped by to clean up. Hey, clean up crew. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Bless the clean up crew. Amen. We're going to leave this place in joy. We are going to leave this place knowing that we going through some things, y'all. But we trust God in the midst of it. And if we can trust God, we can make it through. If we can keep on holding on to God's unchanging hand, we gonna be all right. If we keep looking to God and bringing our burdens to the Lord and leaving them there, we don't have anything to worry about. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we leave this place, but never your presence. We do so, Lord God, with joy in our heart. With some pep in our step, Lord God, and with a new trust in you, oh God. When things come up this week, we'll simply say, God, I trust you. When something gets us down, we'll simply say, God, I trust you. When things aren't looking the way that we hope that they would look, we would say, God, I trust you. We will not accept this, that, this disappointment, oh God, but we will trust you. We will not accept, Lord God, that this is the way it's going to be. We're just going to trust you. And in the meantime, Lord God, we'll be so careful as to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We accept your traveling grace and mercy, Lord God, not just today, but as we go on our journey throughout this week. Until we meet again, Lord Father, we say thank God and amen. Hallelujah.